What's going on, everybody? This is Brian Mazik, a.k.a. Unique Mazik, the hardest working man in sports and gaming. And I got another edition of the Ultimate Legends roster. And y'all, this is truly, I'm going to tell y'all, this is truly the best one ever, right? And I got to tell y'all, as you see the thumbnail, probably made you click on the video this is about the Philadelphia 76ers. This is the first one of these ultimate reveals that I'm doing. Now, it's a couple things I need to tell y'all before we jump into everything in the video, right? First thing is, there's no way in the world I could have done this without Modern Extraordinaire Razor. If you do not follow him, you need to be following him. You need to be subscribed to him on YouTube, following him on Twitter. I put all of that information in the description of this video. He did Every one of the faces that we have in here, uh, he did, if if we redid, if it was redone or made from scratch, he did the whole thing, right? Now, this Barkley is the only exception because somebody else started it off. I don't actually know who, but he finished it up, touched it up a little bit. But every other face in the whole roster that was either redone or done from scratch, Razor did it himself, and you're going to see a lot of it is so dope. To be honest, I wasn't even going to do the Legends roster anymore, but when I started to see him, and I started to see his talent, and see what he's doing on PC, then I had to do it again. That's what's, That brings me to my next point. This entire roster is only on PC, so I am very sorry to PlayStation, Xbox One people, because this does not exist. You cannot do these kinds of mods and make the players look like this through any sort of creative player tool that is available on console, which is why I took the act to PC. So just as a little bit of a piece of advice, I now play all offline modes on PC and I keep the online stuff, my team, anything in the my career situation and the, the neighborhood, I play those things on console. So that's the way I do it. I don't know if that's what you guys want to do. So now we're going to go through every team, not every team in this particular video. This video is just about the 76ers, right? And um, you might be wondering, well, we already have all time teams in the in the game. What is different about yours? Well, mine has been and will always be based on a formula that I created called the FPVR. That stands for the Franchise Player Value Rating. And what the fra uh, Franchise Player Value Rating is based on a few things. It's, it's pretty in-depth. I'll put the link to it in the description. But essentially, it comes down to individual statistics, individual awards, tenure with their franchise, with this particular franchise, and the amount of team success the player was a part of. So it's those four things, individual stats, individual awards, tenure, and the amount of team success the player was a part of. I have a formula that I have put together to kind of calculate, if possible, which players have meant the most to their franchise. Now, I tell you, this does not necessarily mean who's been the best because there may have been a person that's only been there for three years and he might be a better player than a guy who's been there for 10. But if the guy's been there for 10, done any sort of statistic, had any sort of statistical success and team success, he's probably going to get a higher FPVR. That's just the formula. It is what it is. So I wanted to preface that. So as I go through this roster and show you who made it and who didn't, then you know. Also, the way the FPVR works, it's going to change from year to year, right? So or it can change from year to year, right? So with the 76ers, you will not see Joel Embiid just yet. This is only his third season. According to my calculations and estimation, I think he'll probably break into that team after next season. He'll probably break in. If they were to make a run to the championship, maybe, and he won finals MVP this year, According to the formula, he might break on in, but I think we all know that's a little bit unlikely. So, without further ado, let's start to look at who made the team, right? That's important. So, we're going to first, let's go here. FPVR, this is how I broke it down. It's a lot of numbers here. But don't really get so caught up in the numbers, uh, except for the one on the far left, which is the total. That's the total FPVR. As I mentioned, if you want to see a full breakdown of what this means, the link to the FPVR formula is in the description. So number 15 is George McGinnis. He had a very strong career with the Indiana Pacers. Uh, he did make their FPVR too. I'll just let you know that. And he's just barely in there with the 76ers. Once Joel Embiid bumps up a little bit, that's more than likely that's who he's going to pass. 
You also have Chet Walker, who's on another FPVR team as well. He's on the Bulls as well. You get Doug Collins, who was already in the game. Now, George McGinnis was in the game. His model was jacked up from the floor up. So we razor redid that one. You'll see it. Chet Walker uh, was not in the game. So we had to make him. He's in there. Used the same model for the 76ers and the Bulls. Doug Collins was in there. We redid that model. Razor redid that one too. Uh, Bobby Jones was already there. Paul Seymour was not in there, so Razor created him from scratch. Uh, same thing he did with Chet, uh, Chet Walker. Larry Costello was not in the game. He created him from scratch. So if you see the name is bolded, then that means that Razor either had to redo them or create them from scratch. Okay. Maurice Cheeks was in the game. He's on there. Moses Malone. Billy Cunningham, the kangaroo kid. Number seven on here is Charles Barkley. Now, here's what I'm saying. Obviously, Charles Barkley is one of the top two or three guys to ever wear a 76ers jersey. But because he spent only a certain amount of time there and they didn't have a ton of team success, that's why he's only was actually number six there. But it says seven because first category or first line is um, occupied by the totals or the categories. So, there he is. Number five, Will Chamberlain. Obviously, Will Chamberlain's Will Chamberlain, but didn't have uh, all of his tenure there. And it actually his best statistical seasons are probably with the Warriors. Number four, Allen Iverson. We're going to talk about that later on. And of course, Hal Greer. Now, Hal Greer is in the game for my team, but he's not in the game for the all-time roster. So his head was in the game. Um, Razor taught me how to find those heads that are in the game. You can only do this on PC. And then be able to put them on any player. So we had to uh, go ahead uh, and do that. Julius Irvin, Dr. J is number two. And number one is Dolph Shays. Now, just because they're number one does not mean I'm compelled to make them uh, the highest rated player. That doesn't do that. Razor handled the faces. I handled the ratings. I came up with a formula that I tried to use to try, try to quantify what a player would be if they played in today's game. We use statistics. I use video footage. I use people's accounts of, the, of a player's game. All of that. So just to give you an idea, and I'm not going to break every single team down like this. I'll probably just refer people back to this video for a more in-depth explanation of what it is that we did. But. Stretch bigs obviously didn't exist in, you know, before the three point line. And actually, even even as far back as like the 90s, you didn't see stretch bigs. So the way we kind of created that was for centers like Dolph Shays, who would have been more or less undersized centers, but who had a really high free throw percentages. I rationalized that they would potentially have a uh, good three-point shooting ability um, didn't go crazy with it as uh, 2k has done with a lot of the ratings um, I didn't go my team with it where you just start fabricating ratings just for the sake of making a card good I re-rated every single player in the game even if they already had a rating right so once we get to the ratings you're going to see what i mean y'all gonna be mad at me about some of these ratings and some of your favorite players but it's all statistical based field goal shooting two-point field goal shooting three-point field goal shooting free throw shooting turnovers assist all of those things whatever statistics were available to me i use those to come up with these formulas and these ratings so there you have it now you see who is in or who's a part of the 76ers all-time team, according to the FPVR. Now it's time to take a look at what Razor did. We're going to look at like a close-up look of what Razor did to improve these players or to, uh, to actually create some of them from scratch and then to get some of them... Um, uh, to, to put, you know, to update some of the ones that are already in there. All right, let's start off with Wilt the Stilt, the Big Dipper. Now, what I'm showing you here, this one on the left was what 2K already had, which wasn't too bad, right? They had upgraded him from some of the previous uh, um, renders of, of Will Chamberlain. The one on the far right, obviously, is the, an autograph of Will Chamberlain, I mean, autograph, an actual photograph of Will Chamberlain. This is right after he scored 100 points, right? The one in the middle is what Razor did to remake the face. And even though 2Ks is good, it's not as good as Razor's. Now, here's the thing. The one on the left is actually more like the way Wilt looked when he was a 76er, 
which is why that's the one we ended up going with for the 76ers. But that one in the middle is going to be the one used for the Golden State Warriors. So that's going to be young Wilt. That's 50.4 points a game, Wilt. That's the one you're seeing there. Next up, we got Paul Seymour. Obviously, he was not even in the game. Razor made this guy from scratch. Uh, one of the greater um, uh, the, of the Syracuse Nationals, which is where the Philadelphia 76ers franchise was before they were the 76ers. Take a look at that. Now, I know y'all might have to Google it up to see who some of these guys are. But remember, this is not about grabbing the 15 greatest players to play that 15 most talented players to ever play for the 76ers. This is about grabbing the 15 players who accomplished the most for the organization. This is a dope render by Razor. Next, we got Hal Greer. Now, I took the picture when his eyes were kind of closed, but this render was already in the game. I just took it and put it on him. He might be a little bit too dark, but we chose not to redo this when we went ahead and rolled with that. That's Hal Greer. Then we got Larry Costello. This is another one fully done by Razor. The real shot is on the right. Razor's re, uh, remake is or Razor's creation is on the left. He was not in the game at all. He's another one from early 76 er franchise history syracuse nationals the whole nine next up we got george mcginnis now the one this 2k version of george mcginnis is really rough i'm talking about he's been through the fire through the limit to the wall he's been he's been through a lot he's been through a lot i think razor definitely captured his features better um if we probably could do it over, he'd probably do a little bit more texturing with like the forehead and make it maybe the forehead a little bit small, a little bit narrow. But overall, I think it still looks a lot more like him than the one that 2K dropped. And yeah, so that's that for Mr. McGinnis. Moving on, we got Doug Collins. Now this, if you look at the picture, the real picture of Doug Collins on the right, it really doesn't look anything like the one 2K has at all. Um, Razor's looks definitely more like that one. The hairstyle is more legitimate, uh, for sure. Hey, it could maybe be a little bit more narrow, but like I said, it's definitely still better than the one that 2K had. Next, we got Dolph Shays, father of Danny Shays. And by overall accomplishment standpoint, right? The most accomplished 76er player in history. And actually, second place really wasn't even that close. Razor did a great job creating him. He was not in the game at all. Next, we got Chet the Jet Walker. Now, we got him here in the Bulls, in his Bulls look. This is actually the same one we went with for uh, the 76ers. When he was with the 76ers, he did have much shorter hair. I thought about asking Razor to redo it and for that one, but he... Uh, in all, let me tell y'all something. He did like over 140 faces, right? So I didn't really want to nitpick too much about that, but he could have got, we. I could have asked him to maybe do one when he was younger and had the shorter hair, but nonetheless, this is still a really good uh, Chet Walker. Next, we got the star to show as far as the recreations. Razor did this Charles Barkley, and I'm trying to tell you, it is, it's just insane. We all know Charles Barkley is not in the game at all, and this is fantastic. Now, if you're looking at this and you're wondering and you're looking at these shoes and you see it's got the 2K brand shoes on, that's one of the things that I did as well. I went in and changed all shoes and accessories to try to match as well as possible for every single player that is in this roster. So there's a lot of work being put in here uh, so that this can be a good roster. Right. So now we it's time to go and look at the ratings. Now, I'm telling you, all get ready to get upset. Because y'all are not going to like some of these ratings. Some of y'all might not. But some people might appreciate the attempt to, be, to, the attempt to come off uh, with something authentic. All right. So this is not out yet. We have not put this out yet. You're going to notice some of these people already have. Uh, something is done. Like I would say it, most everything is done with something with, with on every team right most everything is done on every team but there's still some touch-ups that need to be done every single face is in uh, just about all the accessories and height and all of that stuff is in for every player but i'm doing it one at a time showing 
off everything because I want to make sure everything's finished when I put it out and when I show it. So well, I'm going to go from the lowest rated 76er all the way up to the highest rated 76er. So I had Paul Seymour rated at 83 overall, 6'1", 180. Um, shooting percentages were not super high, had decent free throw. So I gave him a little bit of a three because he'd be a point guard. Um, but, you know, and basically the little bit of footage that you can find on Paul Seymour, it definitely does not look like a, a crazy great run, run jump athlete. Probably one of those guys that wouldn't be in the NBA if he played today. I I'm, feel pretty safe in saying that. But he's at an 83. Next, we got Larry Costello, just a little bit higher, a uh, little bit. Uh, well, actually, a lot better shooter, better free throw shooter. So I gave him a little bit more love on the uh, the uh, the three point shooting um, just and uh, better, uh, better field goal percentage, period. So that's kind of what gave him the edge. Then we got Hal Greer, um, a really good shooter. But he primarily is a shooting guard, so his height hurt him a bit because 2K does penalize you uh, in your overall rating if your height doesn't match with the position necessarily. Now, he could play point guard, and rating might even go up if you put him at point guard. But this was a, just a straight killer as a shooter, so I mean, as a scorer. So there's that. Now, I told you, just because you had the highest FPR, FPVR didn't mean you was going to have the highest rating. You see Danny Shays is tied for the next to the lowest old, uh, overall rating, but the 84 is still good. Definitely a stretch big, not great athleticism, only 6'8", 220. So that's that. Then we got Chet, the Jet Walker. He was a scorer for sure and a pretty good rebounder back then with the 76ers. 6'6", 212 at the small forward, not horrible size at all. If you look at some video of Chet Walker, you'll see how smooth he was around the baseline, mostly mid-range level jump shots. Didn't look like there was anything that would suggest he'd be a great three-point shooter, but because he was a decent and a good mid-range shooter and a good free-throw shooter, I gave him somewhat of a three that he could knock down. At least he could knock it down, but not ridiculously an elite from deep. Next, we got George McGinnis. Now, George McGinnis had a heck of a season when he first came over to the 76ers from the ABA when he was with Indiana. He did a lot of everything. Big, strong, muscular, athletic guy, uh, could handle the ball, had really good defense, averaged over two and a half steals a game that year. Uh, so we used his age 26 season, and he gets the 86 overall. Next, we got Doug Collins. He also has an 86. Good, just overall player, probably the best outside shooter on this team. Um, Honestly, this 76ers team, their biggest problem is probably going to be outside shooting. As I looked over their team, like some of the lower guys, lower rated guys, they are the shooters. But as you go higher on the overalls, a lot of those guys on this team is not shooters. But Doug Collins is going to get some clock. And he has an 88 open three. Next, I got Billy Cunningham, the kangaroo kid, known for his leaping ability and just active body and big time rebounder and defender. He's a small forward at 6'6", 210, but that rebounding and the defense, if you're wondering how he ended up getting the 88, that's where he got it from. I'm not going to scroll all the way across because it's a ton of ratings, just kind of giving you a little bit of a snapshot. 88 overall. Also at 88 overall, Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones is another straight, almost like lockdown defender, really long, really athletic. He was dunking like nasty on people in the 70s when he was with the with the Denver Nuggets when he's still uh, in the ABA and then brought that same style over to the 76ers part of their championship team in the early 80s. He has 88 overall. Next, we got Mo Cheeks, an 89. Lockdown D, straight. I mean, they this 76ers team can lock up. There's a lot of good defenders, a uh, really good passer, took care of the ball. His, he actually was in the league when the three-point uh, shot became uh, uh, legal or uh, was implemented. And he was never a big-time three-point shooter. Now, obviously, he probably would be a little bit better if he played now with a three-point shot. is such a big part of the game. But because he played during a three-point era, I didn't feel comfortable jacking him up too high, which is something that 2K pretty much had already done. So I put him at the 30-72 open three. He can make them, but he's not a guy you're going to be like, hey, let's shoot the three. Next up, yes, and here's where the hate is going to probably come in. But let me just let me just let me just say, Allen Iverson is just an 89. Now you might be like, how in the world is he just an 89? But I'm just trying to tell you. Look, if you look at the shooting and the field goal percentages that Iverson had, they were not fantastic. Never really was he a outstanding three point shooter. 
and he's a smallish shooting guard. Now, that said, Compen still still compensating and still accounting for his outstanding scoring ability. He has 21 badges. OK, because you can't hate on that. The mid range stuff is not that high, but the mid range off the dribble is a 94. He can make a three at 76, but if you look at he shoot, he shot like 20 and 26 and 27 and 28 percent from three. I could and shot a lot of them, so I couldn't say he was, you know, whatever. Free throw shooting shot 81 percent from the free throw line the year I use, but the standing layups 91, driving layups 92, uh, the standing dunk. Of course, he's six feet tall. 55 dunk, 50 contact dunk, which is, might have been a little bit generous. Um, 99 drawing foul, for sure. 99 ball control. 99 speed with the ball. Passing accuracy is a 77. Passing vision is an 80. Passing IQ is a 74. His hands is a 95. Now, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna look at everybody this deep, but because this is Iverson, and I know that the 89 is gonna probably make some people go into some type of cardiac arrest, I wanted to still show why I got. Why, you know, why I rated him the way I rated him. Um, the pass receptions are 90, steals are 95. I mean, hustles are 95, lateral quickness is a 94, his regular speed is a 99, accelerations are 99, verticals are 89, stamina is a 99, durability is a 98. I mean, you know, he can, he's a beast still. So don't let that 89 fool you. He's still nasty. Part of the reason that he's only an 89 is because he's a six foot shooting guard. But I'm gonna let you know the way I have the rotation set up, he starts at point guard anyway. And I have Julius Irvin playing the two, Charles Broccoli playing the three, Moses Malone playing the four, and then Will in the middle. So just so you know. So next up, Dr. J at a 90. Now you might be like, why is Dr. J just a 90? Dr. J, not, I mean, he's a small forward, but the three point shooting was, was never high. And as a small forward, the way 2K's rating system works, they're going to really put a lot of emphasis on whether or not a, a wing can shoot a three. And if they cannot, it's going to hurt their ratings overall. Uh, we got Moses Malone also with a 90. Now, you guys are going to notice that my ratings are much lower than what 2K has. Uh, but I think it's going to balance out across the entire roster. And, I, and as I've been playing with these teams, I'm seeing some really cool, realistic feel to the game. So I'm really wanting everybody to kind of see what I'm talking about because I'm feeling like it's really is working out pretty good. Next, we got Charles Barkley, who's also a 90. Now, how is Charles Barkley only a 90? Well, he's a six foot six power forward. And the game is going to recognize that. Also, he was a, not a good three point shooter, especially during the years that I took from the 76er years. Got a little bit better from three with Phoenix, but with the 76ers, not great. You'll also notice when the Phoenix Charles Barkley comes up, he won't have any hair at all. This Barkley has the little shadow. I thought that was really dope that Razor did that. Next, we got Will Chamberlain. He is the highest rated player on the 76ers with a 96 overall. Now, so that just lets you know. Will Chamberlain, who averaged, I believe in that season, I think it was something like 34 and 26. I got to go back and look at it. He had averaged like 7.8 assists a game and shot 68% from the field. Even with all that, he got a 96, not a 99, okay? But the 99 uh, close, the, the of course, the mid-range and the three-point stuff is not going to be there. Free throw shooting was terrible, but standing layup, 99. Driving layup, uh, 99. Standing dunk, 99. Driving dunk, 99. Contact dunk, 99. Foul, 99. I mean, so he's going to get it done. Passing accuracy is a uh, 91 because he averaged almost eight assists a game. Passing vision, 99. Passing IQ is an 87. Hands in 93. Post controls in 99. So he's going to get it done. Don't you worry. Look at the rebound numbers. He And he's got 26 badges. So Chamberlain's going to get it done. So with all of that said and all of that shown, I'm this video's been longer. These Some of this, the, the next videos are not going to be as long, but I had to kind of explain things with this one. Now I'm going to give you a quarter to watch this 76ers team in action. I'll probably have them play against uh, the 76ers, to the, the real life seven, or the today's or the current 76ers, just so you can get a, uh, an idea of what we got going on. But I hope you enjoyed and understood what I was saying or what I was doing with this particular video. Uh, so like I said, let's take a look at some, some all-time 76er gameplay. 
against the current 76ers. Everyone, time to get into it. NBA action on 2K Sports. With Greg Anthony, Chris Weber, and David Aldridge, Kevin Harlan. And joining us tonight, a man who once said he will never ride another traditional sports column. Please don't say that. So, Bill Simmons, don't well, say that. So now you just have to tweet. You need 280 characters, and you can pretend you're a writer. What do you think of social media? I, I actually think for basketball, it's been a huge advantage. And it hasn't been a huge advantage for a lot of other things, but I think it's made basketball a lot more fun. I do worry, though, sometimes that people are just watching their Twitter feed over the games. I still think there's an advantage for people who actually are watching what's going on versus watching people's reactions to what's going on. Interesting. It's the Philadelphia 76ers and the Philadelphia 76ers. We've got a chance here to set the floor courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go for this one. So on the floor for Philadelphia, Malone is out there with Barkley, then there's Chamberlain, then there's Irving, and it's Iverson in at the point guard position. Hey, Bill, watching the evolution of the Sixers team, you know, they've talked about the process. That's yeah. how they kind of labeled what they're doing right now, what they have done to get to this point. Uh, the Celtics, I think, if you were talking about the process, the Celtics did a better version of it. They built arguably a better base of young players. The biggest thing with Philly was that the Joel Embiid draft was where they got lucky because he was going to be the first pick in that draft. He got hurt in a workout maybe five or six weeks before the draft. Falls to three. And if that doesn't happen, they don't have the Embiid-Simmons combo. Instead, they have Andrew Wiggins, and we're not we're not uh, deifying Sam Hickey. down the first one. And guys, it's crazy. He, he really was a late bloomer. You know, Irving didn't have the big time amateur career you hear about with some stars. But boy, he's more than made up for. And so Irving nails both of them. And it's McConnell with the ball. He'll bring it up for Philadelphia. Pass to Simmons. With some arc. Chamberlain with the clock. And the quickness off the floor. It, the insane reach. Well, one of the greatest shot blockers you'll ever see. Chamberlain. And now the 76ers on the break. Shots good by Barkley. A little over a minute gone here in the first quarter. Bill, one shot to win a game. You can pick any player. Who's going to take that shot for you? Kevin Durant. I think he has the most ways to get a good shot off. I always look at it as, is it a quality shot to get off? So he can... Post the small guy up, he can shoot a three. He's got the pull up pissy jumper, as he calls it. Uh, he can go in the lane and pump fake and do a little drop step. And I just think he has the most moves. Some people would say LeBron, but am I getting regular season LeBron or playoff LeBron? Playoff LeBron. Playoff LeBron would be my number one he'd choice. Be, he'd be pretty good. Yeah, he'd be pretty good. Yeah. Regular season LeBron, I'm not as enthused about it. And Kevin, plays like that are really the reason they've got a nice lead right now. Just a great job on the glass. And Greg, the jam and the follow gets their whole bench jumping. Look at them. They are really into it. Guys, those are the kind of hustle plays that keep a team in front. We're talking about last second shot instincts, Bill. You mentioned LeBron, KD. Uh, what about Curry? Where does Curry rank in that conversation? Curry's game. Top five? You can guard Curry in those one-on-one -on -one situations with the right people. I'm not saying you're going to stop him, but, you know, you put a taller guy Take on him. and a break. Curry, to Do me, yourself. Curry is the greatest not in the offense score I've ever seen in my life where he can get 32 and hit 10 threes and wasn't really involved in the game. Just you forget about him for one play, and all of a sudden he's in the corner and they're setting him up or he's running off the screen. He's It's a lot... Almost like what Reggie Miller and Ray Allen were able to do 
where, yeah, you run them off screens and you tire the guys out and you kind of hope the defense forgets they're out there. Mm -hmm. But he's not a conventional get out of my way guy. So right. I'm gonna get to the rim. Yeah, absolute score like someone like Donovan Mitchell is. Mm -hmm. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to David Aldrich. Well, I was able to talk with Brett Brown for a minute, and it's all about pace tonight. He said we're fast, we know it, and we're going to make sure they know it too. Those are pretty bold words, Kevin. We'll see if they can deliver. Thank you, David. Bill, we've seen the NBA take steps to amend the draft lottery. Any further changes that you might uh, recommend? The biggest thing I would do is I just don't think you should be able to finish in the top three two years in a row. I think there has to be some sort of schmuck insurance for the rest of the week. <laughs> I just, I'm fine rewarding the one bad season, but when you're just continuously bad, the year that Cleveland, when they won the lottery three out of four years, I just thought that was a travesty. Just didn't I feel like it. No, it's just wrong. There's 30 teams in the league, and you have a team that really blows the LeBron James era and just surrounds him with the wrong people and he leaves and then really can't stay out of its way for the next couple of years and they just keep getting the number one pick. I don't agree with that. I think that's bad. I also thought it was bad that Philly was able to get number three and number one in back-to-back -back years and it's bad that the Celtics were able to get the third pick and then the first pick. So, I, that would be the one thing I would do. I, I don't think it should, I don't think you should be able to successfully fail for multiple years. And here in the first quarter, with a little over three and a half minutes played, Iverson kicks to Malone. That's good, great play set up by Iverson. Malone's got his first points of the night. And Malone, a high percentage score when he gets it in deep. Once he's got the defense on his back, the game becomes easy with his ability to score. Count it. Yeah, good awareness there. He sees an opening and doesn't hesitate. Well, that opening right there, that's just because the defense failed to rotate. <laughs> now here's Iverson. Defense right on him. Wants to get it to Irving and does. An emphatic LU jam. Chemistry at its best. An unreal alley -oop. God, you're right. The pass, the catch, the dunk. All of it perfect. And a tremendous Unleash Chaos replay. Why coming to you courtesy of Under Armour, Hover Havoc. The shooting numbers just aren't there yet in the fourth. Bill, your long-lost cousin Ben Simmons headlined a tremendous rookie class in 2017, and I think people might think it's the best rookie season ever in the history of the league. A lot of good players. Hey, Simmons, Mitchell, Tatum. Do we count Simmons in that class, though? I guess well, since he won the rookie of the year, let's put him in All there. All right, we'll Just put him in there. Technically. I think if you come out of a year of rookies and you get one guy who has a chance to be a franchise guy, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. We had three. If you're doing three a year for 10 years, you you have the most ridiculous league of all time. I think the talent ebbs and flows, and we've had stretches. Like, I think last decade, in the 2000s, especially, like, from about 03 to 07, 08, like, we were just short all-stars. They were just, we were short a few guys, and you saw teams like, the Nets with Jason Kidd made the finals two years in a row. And you saw the Ben Wallace Pistons team actually win the title. With no superstar. Right. And you saw, you know, in 06, the Pistons, remember they, they were on pace to win 70 games and they had four All-Stars? The league just wasn't that good. And now it's flipped and it's so loaded. I, I think from a talent standpoint, as good as any year since 1993. Wow. That's a big statement. Yeah, we 25 years ago. We just loaded with guys who could be Hall of Famers right. someday or, you know, eight-time All-Stars, things like that. So now you look at this 17 class, Simmons, Mitchell, Tatum, just right there. That's awesome. I still believe in Lonzo, and I still believe in De'Aaron Fox. I think those guys can be All-Stars, mm -hmm. too. Basket counts, and that's now 10 points for Ben Simmons. This is where Simmons likes to shoot from. I mean, the closer he is to the rim, the better. Iverson outside. The pass to Bart. Butler against Irving. Over Butler. Here's Chamberlain. That's his second shot and his second basket. He's two for two. Uh -uh. And we may have an injury here that does not look good. 
And I'll tell you, this is something you never like to see. Oh, man, come on. Injuries like this can change the course of a game, even a whole season. Our thoughts and prayers are with him. Some changes for Philadelphia. Buscala, he's checked in for Simmons. Corkmaz comes in for Wilson Chandler. And Markel Fultz is subbed in for T.J. McConnell. And the 76ers decide to take their first time out here. Bill, you've watched the NBA evolve. Talk about some of the biggest changes over the last decade you've seen. The three-point line and, and the threes or foul shots philosophy, I think, is the biggest thing. Just the pace of the game has really improved and, and to a really pleasing way for fans. Like, just what, what Steve Nash was doing last decade and those Suns teams, that everybody's playing that way now. I think the social media and the, the players basically getting rid of the wall between them and the fans using social media, using Instagram, and we just feel like we know these guys better. And their ability to control their own message now versus where they were 10 years ago, mm. it all started with the decision of LeBron James and has carried through this whole decade. And these guys now, they can get whatever message out they want. They can criticize the president. They can criticize their own team. They can ask for a trade. Mm -hmm. If they get called out by some writer or somebody who writes a hit piece, they can go back at the guy and sick all their fans <laughs> on, the, on the writer. And the 76ers making a change here. McGinnis, he's checked in for Malone. Cunningham comes in for Barkley. Collins checked in for Irving. And Cheeks is subbed in for Iverson. Going back to our topic from a moment ago, Bill, you mentioned the interaction between players and social media and how that's become a new facet, a, a skill we're seeing daily from players. Uh, there's just way more accountability now. And I, I'm really impressed by how polished the guys are that come in the league now. And I, I think the LeBron generation, LeBron, Wade, some of the Chris Bosh, some of those guys from the last generation that came up and became vets and really knew how Paul Pierce, he knew how to handle their business. Now these new guys come in, they're 19, 20 years old, and they act like they're 30. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen it at the games. Shocking. Whereas in the 90s, it was a free-for-all. Mm -hmm. You had these guys who gave them a live mic, you were terrified. <laughs> and now these guys are 19 years old, Polished. giving, like, you know, long interviews to <laughs> reporters. It's how are you doing this? Tatum in particular is very Tatum's impressive. Tatum's already good at being a bad interview. It's like, he doesn't, he doesn't say anything. He knows how to dodge any question. It's like, you're 19. How do you know how to do this? Johnson kicks to Muscala. Just five to shoot. Fires from 14. That one a little long. Uh, a team's rebounding is a great measure of its energy, and theirs has been terrific here in the first quarter. Pass to Chamberlain. Over Johnson, and that one's good by Chamberlain. And now it's an 11-point 76ers lead, and it's the 76ers with the ball. Bill, several of your books have been bestsellers. How do you feel to see your work so well-received around the world? I think I was really happy that the basketball book did well because I spent a long time writing it, and it was 700 pages. And when it got mailed to me, it was so big, I thought people would just be terrified of it. And, you know, it I think out, they embraced the Yeah, I think they did. They liked it. I designed it for people to be able to put on their toilet or bring on an airplane or whatever they want to do with it. But uh, I was always amazed that there wasn't a basketball book that tried to kind of group all these other books and some of the opinions and all the misinformation. Like the fact that, honestly, the reason I wanted to write the book was just that people thought Will Chamberlain was better than Bill Russell. And yet every single thing written in the 60s was that Bill Russell was better. And all the players would say Bill Russell is better. And when they played together, Bill Russell's team won. So it's like, how do we get to the point where people think Will Chamberlain was better? So it was that and some other stuff that made me want to write the book. The shot's good from McGinnis. And not hard to see why they are giving up points on this run. Just too many good looks from in close. Now here's Fultz. Defended by Jeeks. Muscala. It's good on the footback. 
Okay, and that's a pure hustle play, getting to the offensive glass for the tip-in. And that's the kind of quality you see in any strong offensive rebounder, isn't it? Here's Cheeks. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Here's McGinnis. The jump hook, count that one. And the 76ers lead by 13. And defensively, they are on their heels every time the ball comes inside. Here's Fultz. Rebounded by Wilt Chamberlain. Chamberlain got eight rebounds in this game. And he's been way off the mark this quarter. It's been ugly. It's going by Muscala. And stolen by Chamberlain. Pass to McGinnis. Here's Cheeks. Philadelphia moving the ball around. Second chance shot. McGinnis' shot is off. Shamit. He's guarded by Collins from the baseline. And Philadelphia grabs the miss. Guinness has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. Guinness has got 10 points. Starting to surge here, and we're only in the first quarter. And it's happening at both ends, trying to end this thing before it begins. The first quarter concludes in a double-digit lead on the scoreboard. Philadelphia ahead. Pocket, I'll be weak. I'm rather unique.